Hi, I'm Malik Jordan from Learn Color Grading and FilmSimplified.com, and today we're going to be discussing stabilization. You might have tried to stabilize your footage in Resolve before, and you didn't get exactly the results you want. Unfortunately, not a lot of filmmakers know that there are three different uh, modes for the stabilizer and Resolve that can produce vastly different results based on the kind of footage you're using. So if one mode didn't work, you can try using the other modes. So let's take a look at this footage here. If I play it, you know, just uh, she's looking out a window and uh, it's a bit shaky. So to stabilize your footage, you have to be on the tracker window. And on the tracker window, you have a drop down menu here with three different modes. So you have window stabilizer and effects. We'll select stabilizer. And to stabilize your footage initially, it's pretty easy. You just have to hit stabilize here. And now Resolve will go through every frame analyzing your footage and applying a stabilizer effect. So we're done now with analyzing the footage. You can see the results of the analysis here down. And let's take a look at the footage and you'll notice something very interesting here. Now, when I play, the footage actually looks more shaky. It doesn't look uh, smooth. Now, a lot of filmmakers would just stop here. They would just look at the stabilization results and they would go, no, this is not good. And they would just move on. However, let's take a look at the settings to the bottom here. First to the right is the single most important setting. If I open this drop down menu, you'll notice that you have three different settings for stabilizing your footage. You have perspective, similarity, and translation. Think of this as three different stabilizers inside uh, Resolve, and you can switch between them. These are simply three different algorithms that Resolve uses to analyze and stabilize your footage. So if one doesn't work, you can try the others. For example, we saw the result of perspective and how on this particular footage, it ended up being more shaky. So now I'll switch from perspective to similarity and we did not switch yet we just told the stabilizer at this point that whenever we ask you to stabilize from now on you should use this new method however to actually use similarity now we have to click stabilize again and wait for resolve to analyze the footage one more time and now when it's done note that the lines here change and we have different settings now let's play again and notice that this is way more smooth this actually look way smoother than before. So you can see that by simply switching the mode the stabilizer works on, we can get better results. For example, let's switch to the third one, translation. Again, nothing changed. We just switched translation here, but in order to apply the translation stabilizer, we have to hit stabilize one more time and wait for it to analyze. And now let's play one more time. And I think the results are not as good as the one before. So let's switch back to similarity. Let's stabilize one more time to get uh, the one that worked best for us. So let's play one more time. This is similarity. I think this one worked best. I'll hit bypass stabilization. Take a look at the original footage, how shaky it was here. There was a lot of shake at the end. Take a look one more time. And now when we apply the stabilization again, look how much smoother it is. So now let's take a look at the rest of the settings. First, we have zoom. If I uncheck zoom, notice that we zoomed out and this will show you how the stabilizers actually work. I'll just zoom out even more and take a look at the edges of the frame here once I play. So note that now Resolve is moving the frame around in order to stabilize the footage. However, this stabilizes your footage, but you end up unfortunately with a lot of empty pixels uh, on the edges of the frame. So in order to hide these empty pixels, you just hit zoom and Resolve will zoom into the footage a bit. Next is camera lock. Camera lock tells Resolve that this footage was shot on a tripod and you should try to eliminate all uh, movement in the frame. Then we have smooth and cropping ratio. Smooth will tell Resolve how smooth the uh, movement uh, should be in the frame. So if I increase it all the way to one, notice that when you adjust the smoothness, you need to click stabilize one more time. So now with smooth at one, I'll simply hit stabilize. And this is the new footage. Notice that it's much uh, smoother, but we cropped a lot into the image in order to get this smoothness. So there is always a balance between how much you crop into the image and how smooth uh, the stabilizer would be. So let's reset this back to 0.25. 
And finally, we have the cropping ratio, which tells Resolve how much it can crop into the image. However, this is an inverted control. So if I go all the way to one, this means no cropping or at least less cropping. So now I changed it to one, I'll hit stabilize and notice that we're not cropping into the image almost. It's, it's not very stable. However, I'll bring cropping down to 0.25, hit stabilize one more time and notice that now we're cropped more into the image and the image looks much smoother. It's a bit weird, but less uh, cropping factor means actually more cropping and a higher cropping factor means less cropping. Just remember it that way. So that was an overall look at uh, stabilization in Resolve and the three different modes. If you like this, please visit us at learncolorgradingandfilmsimplify.com where you can find a full free crash course on all the aspects of DaVinci Resolve. So we're covering in the crash course, uh, you know, uh, media, editing, uh, fusion, color grading, fair light, and export, uh, all in a free course that is very easy and designed for the absolute beginner. So you can find the link in the description. Thank you very much. Filmsimplified.com